What is up everyone, Master Premier Classic is arriving this Monday. So in today's video, I'll give you a quick rundown of the meta and show you five good teams to run to get you ready for Masters Premier Classic. The Master League Premier Classic meta is really, really tiny. There's really only like 20 viable options in this uh, format. And if you played Master League Premier Classic last time, it was around in Season 4, I believe. All of those teams are still incredibly viable however there have been some moveset updates and move changes alongside some new pokemon that do spice up the meta a little bit what hasn't changed however is that metagross is still the king of this meta whatever you do you either run metagross or you make sure you counter metagross metagross with a one to zero shield advantage actually beats everything in the meta but three Pokemon. Well, actually, I would say too. I don't think Charizard is very meta. Besides the Metagross matchup, it doesn't do that well. Uh, but the only two that do, that are meta, are Garchomp and, and Snorlax. And these are very close matchups, as you can see. And in Snorlax's case, really bait dependent. So yeah, Metagross is an absolute monster. Watch out of it. Make careful use of your shield so you don't uh, end up in this scenario with a Metagross closer on your opponent's side. Uh, on the other hand, if you're running Metagross, try to get into that scenario. And you always win. Alright, that is usually the play in this league. Luckily though, since last time we had Master Premier Classic, a good Metagross counter has arrived. Extra Drill is now an amazing metagross counter of course still loses in a one to zero shield scenario but in general it is an absolute wall to metagross which is something we lacked last time a premiere was around but it still loses to zeros which is kind of unfortunate but it just absolutely destroys the ones and the twos uh, versus metagross and besides that it, pa it, it just destroys a lot of things that were commonly paired with metagross back in the day you saw a lot of tokus a lot of dragonite uh, paired with metagross and extra roll kind of breaks that core which is really nice to see anyway let's just move along this rankings gyarados still absolute monster uh, with waterfall you actually have a pretty good matchup versus metagross if you run waterfall though i would uh, consider running waterfall aqua tail and outrage because outrage does help give coverage for those dragons however waterfall aqua tail crunch also still works uh, I think Shadow is recommended. The extra bit of damage is quite nice. However, the regular one works just fine as well. Snorlax, one of the best generalists in this meta. Really only hard walled by fighting types. And I don't think fighting types will be uh, that common since charmers are also everywhere alongside Dragonite and Gyarados, uh, which they do fear. However, a well placed Machamp uh, with Rock Slide. Can definitely do a lot of work because besides charmers it doesn't really have many hard answers because a rock slide of course does basically one shot a dragonite uh, and a gyarados so they can definitely work Garchomp will be another very strong option you could consider running mud shot uh, for the better steel coverage or dragon tail if you want to do better versus opposing dragon types so either way watch out for those fairy types because Garchomp has zero play against talking about dragon types versus fairy types there's one dragon i do want to highlight and that is gudra pv poke recommends it with power whip and draco meter but i would say get rid of both of these moves and run it with muddy water and sludge wave with muddy water you can actually beat your main counters like excadrill and toekiss in the zero shields which is just incredible I think Gujar will be an amazing pivot with this moveset. It's basically gonna be a dragon that does nothing that a regular dragon should do, but does everything that a regular dragon shouldn't do, like beating Extra Drill, beating Tokus, beating Magnezone. Unfortunately, it sucks versus Metagross still, uh, but uh, being able to beat Tokus and Extra Drill already is very big for a dragon. Another one of my favorite dragons is. Hexorus with a really interesting moveset of counter, Dragon Claw, Night Slash, able to beat all the steals, Snorlax, Swampert, and with Dragon Claw coverage, able to hit all the dragons. Night Slash is quite nice for that boost potential as well. It basically has play versus everything besides the fairy types. So yes, definitely a good option, but make sure you pair it with some good steel types to cover the for those fairies. Moving back to the steel types, we have Magnezone, which was a really good option back in the day because it's a steel type that beats metagross 
However, I feel like with the addition of extra drill, um, Magnezone will see a bit of a drop off because extra drill just absolutely destroys Magnezone while still doing the same thing that Magnezone did in beating Metagross. The niche uh, Magnezone does have though is it's able to beat Gyarados really, really hard. So if you're looking for a steel type that also destroys Gyarados, Magnezone definitely your play. Mamoswine is not really a steel type, but it does a lot of the same stuff steel types do. Beats the dragons, the fairies, well, Togekiss, I don't think it's that great for Sylveon, but it does beat Togekiss, which I feel Togekiss will be the charmer of choice, just because of Flamethrower. Being able to hit the steel types is really, really big. I think the only time we'll see Sylveon is in a double charm line, to be honest, or if you just don't have the resource for Togekiss. In, in general, though, I would recommend Tokus if you're going to run Charmer, just because of the Flamethrower, hitting the Steel Dabs are, fair, are super effective, is quite massive. Anyway, though, Bamboswine does beat it, uh, alongside with the Bulldog Scorverge, able to uh, still do a lot of damage versus Metagross, though generally you don't win that, you can do a lot of damage, just destroy Magnezone, you also beat Extra Drill, so really good option. Now we're gonna move into a lot more of the niche Pokemon, I think Swampert is one of those, Swampert is just one of the premier steel answers beats all the steels but it sucks versus all the flying types it just gets destroyed by dragonite uh, gyarados so if you need a good steel answer go swampert but make sure you pair it with some good answers to those flyers then a new addition to the meta mylotic which i think is a very interesting pokemon with dragon tail surf blizzard has some cool coverage if you bait uh, a Surf or a Stokis, you can actually hit the Blizzard and kill him in the one shield scenario, which is really, really cool. With a Dragon Tail, you can farm down most dragons, though, versus Dragonite, still very close because Surf, of course, is not very effective. You actually beat Metagross because you resist uh, the charge moves and the fast moves. And because of Surf, you can actually also beat Extra Drill. So I think Milotic is going to be an amazing, like, generalist. However, it Barely hits 3k CP, so it lacks a lot of stats to really compete with a lot of the top meta. So I feel like it's going to underperform a tad. Another new addition to the meta, Heracross. I feel it's going to be quite interesting. It's a fighting type that beats the other fighting types because of the rock typing. And then it still has coverage versus the flying types as well with the rock blast. I think in general, champ is still going to be better though, but Heracross is definitely a decent option. Another really interesting option is Hippowdon. With this moveset of Ice Fang, Weather Ball Rock, and Earth Power, can Ice Fang down a lot of the Dragon types. Togekiss, destroy Magnezone, and also be really good against Extra Drill. Uh, and, well, whilst it doesn't beat Metagross with the Earth Power, you still have a lot of play versus it. And with Weather Ball Rock, it can hit some of his main answers like Gyarados. So overall, a solid generalist, but that's the same thing as Milotic, where its stats just don't really compare to a lot of the top meta options. So I feel like in general, you're going to see it kind of underperform, but still should be a fun option. I think that's basically all the meta covered. There's some really niche options still. I think Rapperior is a good uh, steel answer. However, I feel like Extra Drill has kind of replaced it uh, in this current meta. It used to be pretty damn good. Trevenant might seem like a really interesting option because it beats Metagross, Swampert, Magnezone, Fighters. Really cool coverage, to be honest. However, it's only like 2600 CP at level 40, level and 100%. Uh, so it just gets obliterated by anything neutral, like Dragonite and Garchomp, just absolutely destroyed. It stands zero chance, even though those are neutral matchups. So I, don't, I wouldn't recommend the same counts for Gengar, to be honest. It's a Pokemon I've tried uh, before in the Premier meta, and it just doesn't really work out, even versus Metagross. It's like Metagross gets a little bit of energy advantage and it's just too close. And same with Tokus, the charms are just too much. I wouldn't recommend anything below here, to be honest. Though, there's definitely a Pokemon you can make work. Something like an Arcanine, for example. Can be quite interesting with Snarl Wild Charge and a Flamethrower. Uh, beats like Metagross, Magnezone with a little bit of energy, energy advantage. You could beat Magnezone, that is. And Extra Drill as well. Gyarados, you can hit with Wild Charge. So for a Fire type, really interesting coverage, but not a Pokemon I would really recommend. Enough talk about the meta. Let's get into these teams. All right. Before we get started, though, I want to ask y'all if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like and the sub because that makes me know I should make more of these types of videos. Anyway, first team, like usual, 
I don't just want to give you one team and there it is. I want to give you several options for each Pokemon so you can make it your own. That is very important in my opinion. This first framework though is one of my favorites. Something I ran a lot during season four of Premiere is the Steel Double Dragon with Hexorus in the back. Steel plus Hexorus is just an amazing core and all the Steel types and Hexorus do amazing when uh, you have a shield advantage and the dragon in the back is designed to grab a shield advantage all right or a dragon in the middle i mean dragonite garados or gudra those will be your safe swaps in this line always you never want to safe swap hexers that's just suicide uh because hexers can get hard walled by tokus and then you're just then it's just over if you get locked into a tokus so use one of your middle dragons as your safe swap dragonite if a charmer comes in you want to hit the hurricane because uh, that brings Tokus into the deep red. And if you uh, then you can farm it down with like a Magnezone or a Metagross. Or I think you might even be able to much shoulder down with Extra Drill. Get so much energy. Uh, Gyarados, you likely want to run with Waterfall, Aquatail, Outrage. In that case, it's a pretty good safe swap. Even if a Dragon comes in, which is its hardest answer. Or Magnezone, you can get it very, very low. Well, Magnezone, you can get very, very low. A Dragon, you might be able to grab a shield or kill with the Outrage and get the switch advantage back. Gudra, like I said earlier in the video, Muddy Water, Sludge Wave, can kill Extra Drill, can kill Tokus. It just kills a lot of uh, the, dr the common dragon counters. And well, once uh, the common dragon counters are gone, Tokus uh, mainly, or Sylveon, Hexorus can just sweep. That's the whole idea with this squad. If you go with Magnezone lead, I would highly recommend you don't go Dragonite, because then you're very weak against Extra Drill. If you go Extra Drill on the lead, you can really go any of these three dragons. And with Metagross, it's the same. I would not recommend going Dragonite because they are just insanely weak against uh, Extra Drill again. So Metagross with Gyarados and Gudra, Megazone with Gyarados and Gudra, or Extra Drill with all three of these. And they are solid comps. Next team, Triple Flyer. This line was very common in Season 4 of Premiere. I don't know who originally came up with it, but it was just everywhere. Dragonite, Gyarados, and Tokus. Dragonite, your standard moveset. Dragon uh, Breath or Dragon Tail. I think that's personal preference to be honest between both those two. But then Dragon Claw and Hurricane as charge moves. Gyarados, you want Waterfall, Aqua Tail. And then the second charge move is, I think, up to you. I would go Outrage because uh, Gyarados is your pivot in this line. And with Outrage, you can beat those dragons, which do tend to switch in. And then Tokus in the back. On first sight, you might think this line is incredibly weak to a Steel Lead. Magnezone, Extra Drill, or Metagross just beat uh dragonite and toke is mainly you would expect and well magnezone carols as well of course and well you're not entirely wrong but the thing is dragonite is absolutely busted and it actually b beats both metagross and extra real in a two shield just straight and claw you win those matchups Ma magnezone same deal if you can like call the the right charge moves if you can no shield the mirror shots or shield a wild charge throw your dragon claw after their debuff dragonite can beat magnezone and then once that steel type is gone, Tokish just goes off and Magnezone or Gyarados as well. This team works by kind of overloading your opponent's like flying answer. It can't kill all three of your flyers. And once their flyer answer is gone by teamwork, they have nothing left. And you just sweep with your other flyers. So that's why this team works incredibly well. Next team, another ABB style line, double steel or Almost why in the back, uh, it's kind of like a pseudo steel though. Very, very solid. Works with a lot of different leads to be honest. Dragonite, Hexverse, and Swampert are the main ones, but like Machamp or another fighter also works quite well in the double steel uh, comp. You can really go any of the four steels or Mammoth Swine I have aligned here in any order. Uh, though I would recommend definitely going with at least Mammoth Swine or Metagross because those will be your best. Pivots slash safe swaps slash sacrificial swaps in case of a bad lead and then extra drill or magnezone in the back. Though keep in mind uh, that if you lead Dragonite, you're gonna be incredibly weak to extra drill already. Though extra uh, Dragonite can beat the extra drill on two shield, it's not ideal though. So if you lead Dragonite, I would highly recommend you to not go with magnezone or metagross in the back. If you lead Dragonite, I would highly recommend you go Mamoswine extra drill. I think that's solid. If you go Hexorus, you can go basically everything. But I would definitely recommend picking either one Metagross or Mamoswine. And then uh, in addition to that, you can go any of the other three. Same with Swampert because you already have a good 
extra row answer in the lead there. Like I said, basic A, B line. If you have a bad lead, switch into one of your steels, Memo Swine or Metacross, uh, most preferably. Just let it go down. Hopefully you can get a sure advantage. And well, then once their steel counter is gone, you just hope you can sweep with the other one. It's very, very simple. Next team just focuses on extra grill flyer core. That is an insanely uh, strong core, uh, especially if you pick Dragonite or Tokus as your flyer. It's almost unbreakable, to be honest, except by other extra drill. Or uh, Memo Swine is good against it as well, but uh, the Flyers and Extra Girl Surf play against those too. And then there's a very solid safe swap in the middle, Snorlax, uh, which can basically get switch advantage or shield advantage against anything that switches in. It is uh, absolutely busted, Mon. I would run it with Lick, Body Slam, and Superpower, though if you're scared of dragons switching into your Snorlax, you could consider going Outrage as well, because it just one shot those dragons, or Earthquake, if you really want to be spicy for those Steel types. But in general, Body Slam Superpower does perform the best, and Shadow is also preferred if you have it. But yes, that just gets your advantage or switch advantage back from anything. Ideally, you'd want switch advantage with this team, because... Uh, these Pokemon are just form an incredibly strong core, the Flyer and the Extra Drill, so Switch Advantage is preferred. But even if you can only get Shield Advantage, that's still fine, because Extra Drill with a Shield Advantage just does incredibly well. Back in the day, uh, this used to be paired with like Metagross in the back or Magnezone in the back as well, but these days I would not recommend it, just because Extra Drill is a thing and will cause a lot of trouble for your Dragonite or Togekiss, plus... Metagross slash Magnezone core, so I would only really recommend this with extra grill on the back. Next team, a little bit more spicy with Hippa down in the lead, running Ice Fang, Earth Power, and Weather Ball. Rock, like I said in my meta breakdown, I thought this one was gonna be a really interesting Pokemon, able to beat a lot of the Steel types, except Metagross, where it's kind of an iffy matchup, you kind of need an energy advantage there to beat it. However, other Steel types you just destroy, you beat uh, Dragon types, Togekiss, and with Weather Ball, Rock, you can still hurt like Gyarados, which is one of your main counters. Then Snorlax uh, in the back has just an amazing uh, generalist ring, Lick, Superpower, Body Slam, and Gyarados uh, to beat Metagross as well. I would uh, recommend running Waterfall, Aquatail, and Outrage here, because there's just the most flexible Waterfall moveset. You kind of need Waterfall here for more coverage against Metagross, because of course Hippowdon can still struggle with that. And it can also struggle with like a Sylveon. So Waterfall on Gyarados helps there instead of Dragon Breath. This is not really a straightforward team. This is kind of just a team with three generalists. And I feel like you can basically play your way around a lot of matchups with this squad. So it should be quite fun to use. I hope this got you prepared for Master League Premier Classic. Good luck with your battles trainers. And I'll see you in the next one.